Today's learning assignment will be from 1.5. Students will be able to solve linear systems of equations by substitution. I encourage you to pause the video right now and simply try to come up with the two different equations that I need for this problem. So the two different equations that I'm going to need, the first is that x plus y equals 20 and the other one is 3x plus 11y equals 100. So today we're going to talk about how to solve these types of equations algebraically. In our previous sections we've been solving them graphically, which you can still do, but the algebraic approach is one that I, is, is heavily covered in Algebra 1, so hopefully this will be a little bit of review, um, and it's going to work on your algebra skills. So when we solve the systems of equations, we can use algebra instead of just graphing. There are two different methods, substitution and elimination. Today we're going to cover substitution. Here are the steps for solving, because I know sometimes students like to have a list of a procedure that they do when solving. The first thing you do is solve one of the equations for one variable. So you're either going to solve for x equals or y equals. Doesn't matter which one. Substitute this expression into the other equation. Make sure you're not going in circles. You've got to use the other equation. Substitute the variable from step two in, into an original equation and solve. Write your answer as an ordered pair. It should look like something like this. Check your solution and then last but not least, we're still going to continue to classify. So let's go through some examples. So in this example, I already have one y solved for me. y is equal to negative five. So I'm going to substitute that into the other equation. Wherever I see a y, I'm going to replace it with negative 5. Now I just have some math to do. And here's where your algebra skills really come into play. So x equals 1 half. Now I know that my y is negative 5, so my solution would be 1 half negative 5, right, I write it in x, y, I would classify this as consistent and independent because I just have the one solution. Let's go ahead and look at example 2. I want to find the easiest way to solve for either 1x or 1y. Pause and see if you can think about which is going to be the easiest 1x or 1y to solve for. I see right here a 1y. I'm going to add 4x to both sides. So I get y is equal to 4x plus 6. I am now going to take that value and substitute it into the other equation. Wherever I see a y, I'm going to replace it with 4x plus 6. Now we need to do some distribution. Combine like terms. I get x is equal to negative 1. I now need to plug that back in so I can figure out what my y value is. So let's go ahead and take x equals negative 1 and plug it in anywhere. Let's plug it in in our second equation. I get that my solution is the coordinate point negative 1, positive 2, and because I got one solution, I classify it as consistent and independent. Let's look at another example. This one sometimes trips students up. I have a y right here and a y right here. Well, because of that, I simply set these two equations equal to each other. Right? I'm substituting either this one up here or this one down there. However you like to think of it, you just need to set those two equal to each other. Then I need to solve. Remember, if I'm going too fast, simply pause the video and, and work out the problem yourself and then catch up. I get x is equal to negative 2. Now I've got to plug that back in to my, one of my original equations. doesn't really matter which one. Let's do the first one. 
2 times negative 2 plus 8. I get that my solution is the coordinate point negative 2, 4, consistent and independent. This one is nice and set up for us. Our x is right there. I'm going to plug it in wherever I see an x. Distribute. I'm then going to combine like terms. And I get that y is equal to positive 1. Now I'll plug that into my second equation. And I get that x is also equal to positive 1. So my solution is 1, 1 and consistent, independent. So what happens if it's not consistent and independent, right? That's the example that we're going to get. What does it look like if I get one of those other ones, whether it's consistent dependent or inconsistent? So I've already got my substitution set up here. So let's go ahead and plug in. Wherever I see a y, I'm going to plug in those values. So 6x minus 6x is just 0. My x's cancel out completely. So I wind up with the equation 2 equals 8. Does 2 equal 8? No, this is an untrue statement. This is not a valid statement. When I get something like this, my solution is that there is no solution. We have an inconsistent set of lines here, meaning they are parallel to each other and they are never going to meet up. Now, if you were, for instance, uh, solving this and we had a 4 here instead, and when I distributed it, I got an 8, and then this became 8 equals 8, when you have a true statement, such as 8 equals 8, then you would have infinitely many solutions. So those would be the exact same line that are just on top of each other, and we classify that as consistent and dependent. All right, it's not math, right, unless we do a word problem. So go ahead and pause the video and try to come up with at least one of the equations for this word problem. First, I'm going to identify what my x value is. That's the number of votes for our incumbent. And I think it's important to really outline that we're talking about the number of votes. Y is going to be the number of votes for my opponent. So once I have identified these, I can start to write an equation. Now, since there were 5,175 votes total, if I add x plus y equals 5,175, that would be a true statement, right? If I add up both the number of votes, I should get 5,175. Now, the other equation can be a little bit trickier, okay? I know that the opponent received fewer votes Right? So the incumbent had more votes, 25% more votes than the number for the opponent. So what I do is I say, okay, my x value, my incumbent number of votes, I'm going to take the amount of votes that the opponent got plus another 25% more of what the opponent got. So basically, if I want to rewrite this, combine my like terms, it's x is equal to 1.25y. So these end up being my system of equation, my two equations right here. So in order to solve, I'm going to take this and plug it in wherever I see an x. So I get 1.25y plus y equals 5,175. I add these together, I get 2.25y equals 5,175. 
divide by 2.25, pick up your calculator, have it help you out, and you get that our opponent received 2,300 votes. I then subtract that from 5,175 and I see that our incumbent received 2,875 votes. As we go through the rest of this unit, there will be more word problem practice. So just know that it is in your future. Thanks for your time.